This mutation is Wheel of Misfortune and it is being played on Void Thrashing. So we have Stukov and Alrak and the starting mutators that we have is going Nuclear, Pure Fire Beam, and Photon Overload. Uh, relatively okay mutators to start, I would say. Um, I think I think for a starting set, I think these are really really good because they don't really affect your economy. Uh, mutators like mineral shields or slim pickings can uh, severely uh, impact your economy at the start of the game, which is when you really need to get everything set up. So uh, I think this is a really good set. It doesn't really impact the players and. Um, it should allow them to ramp up uh, in the early stages of the game um, so that they can deal with the layer mutators that uh, will uh, inevitably be a little bit more difficult. Uh, Pure Fire Beam is kind of annoying, but again, it's going to be parked in the enemy base here until uh, until someone moves out. So uh, that's all okay. So Alarak is taking his fast expand over here now. A standard food on it would expand here. And production wise, let's have a look at the player production. We have a bunker already coming up for Stukov, which is really good. So we'll have a few more infested. Uh, the one thing that will be difficult for Stukov is getting past this going nuclear uh, mutator over here. Um, it's going to, it's really, really spammy. It's, um, it's one that I personally don't really enjoy playing up against. Uh, actually, this might nuke the pylon. Okay, so it gets a reduced damage, but still. Um, I don't really like this mutator very much. It's really, really spammy. You can see here, it's just nuke after nuke and. You spend more time dodging the nukes than you do end up playing the game. Um, it's uh, it's not one of my uh, it's not one of the mutators I prefer to play against. Um, Photon overload will make it a little bit difficult to push to the enemy bases. See, it's a nuke over here as well. By the way, the nukes also do tend to try and target player units. So uh, what usually happens is the uh, the engine will try and find where uh, you have units that are outside a certain range. I think it's... I want to say it's 15 range away from the mineral fields and, um, and then I'll try and nuke you there. First attack wave has spawned over here now and we have a bunch of zealots. The zealots are actually kind of good but they gotta make sure to work of the, uh, the few infested that were standing on this side. So we do have an infest structure that comes down and uh, that will be enough to clear up these zealots on this side. We actually got a very nice surround around that zealot, so uh, extra damage, all is good. And uh, Alrak is out now, and he is ready to try and take out that Void Thrasher. Although I do have a feeling he might actually end up getting nuked. Apocalypse does come down. Uh, they do kill off enough units right now to manually trigger the Void Thrasher. So the Void Thrasher spawns, and you don't really want to waste the, uh, the timer on the Apocalypse. Pure Fire Beam is over here now, and is going to start harassing these players. But this Void Thrasher should go down relatively quickly. And uh, going nuclear is now gone, but now we have void reanimators. And uh, the first void reanimator spawns at the two minute mark, which means void reanimators have already spawned and they will be out. So uh, the players will have to be a little bit careful uh, to make sure that the void reanimator doesn't sneak past uh, this Bokalisk over here, which is uh, getting roasted by the pure fire beam. I was actually kind of close there. Uh, for Alarak, he's kind of getting focus fired down by some immortals over there. The other thing that's going to happen is these Void Reanimators, because they spawn from enemy structures, they could spawn from uh, anywhere on the map right now. So, um, there's very nice attacks here by Alarak, but I think he might be going down at some point. Oh, very nice destruction wave there. Uh, we kind of manages to sneak past. But yeah, so there'll be a Void Reanimator that'll spawn on this side, and it'll start sending a trickle of those units that he's killed off. Um, so... Personally, I'm not sure if like I'm not sure if I would have pushed into that base right here because uh, you can see over here now what's happening, right? This void reanimator. There's a void reanimator over there that's uh, resing these units that Alrak was uh, harassing. So it was a good idea at the time, but uh, I think it may have made the mission slightly more difficult. Uh, I would have very much preferred like Stukov to put down his. Uh, his defenses first before attempting to push. Uh, this next attack wave has spawned over here, so we have Zelux and a scout, which means we're dealing with Skytas uh, carrier. Uh, Alarak does end up getting smoked by that attack wave though, but there is a photon overcharge on this tech lab for some reason. Uh, much better to photon overcharge the barracks instead because it has more HP, but 
That is okay. The hive cluster is under you can see these units are there and they're getting rezzed by this reanimator that's parked over here. Um, this is why I personally would not have uh, taken out those units. But uh, the completed. there is a large number of pings there on the void reanimator. Kill that void reanimator! Um, and eventually the void reanimator will die if uh, he stops rezzing stuff, which he's not going to do. Uh, but there is another bunch of infested. There we go, kill the reanimator. And uh, but yeah, there we go. Down goes the reanimator, and now this is okay. But I'm pretty sure there'll be another bunch of reanimators that will be spawning on that side. Uh, Alarak has completely taken this expansion. Just checking on Stukov as well. Stukov is pretty much almost done, and now we have Slim Picking. So this one is again one of the more difficult ones to deal with. Um, unfortunately for Slim Pickings, is it permanently impacts the mineral field, so you have reduced amount of minerals uh, for the rest of the game. So you end up being able to mine out very very quickly after uh, after the slim pickings mutator ends because it does not reset these mineral fields to uh, their regular uh, quantities. So uh, now the players are on a timer. There is another void reanimator on this side uh, that ends up getting killed by the Apocalypse and uh, Alrak. And but yes, the players are now on a timer because these mineral fields are now uh, have now been reduced to 1,500. So when slip pickings disappears, uh, the the SCVs and the workers will start mining normally, but the uh, the total number of minerals does not get reset back to its normal uh, value. So it remains at 1,500. Eventually, it means that uh, these mineral fields are going to mine out very very quickly. So the players are now on a timer. Another attack wave has spawned here. Um, attack wave does end up going down to at least the ground. There is uh, still no anti-air, but there is one tech lab over there that's being uh, uh, cast with all this, uh, with uh, floating and recharge. Another one goes down as well. I think that may have been a little bit extra, but uh, there we go. So the void reanimators are gone now. So that is the last guy that needs to be killed off, I believe. Um, but we have Orbital Strike and Diffusion now, which uh, Diffusion is really, really nasty. It does make it a significantly more difficult to push into enemy bases, and you gotta kind of be careful when you are pushing into something like Alarak. You can see how much damage he's taking just purely through the Diffusion Mutator, um, because Diffusion spreads the damage equally among all uh, units within a certain area of the damage being dealt. So It is, uh, it is a relatively unpleasant mutator. Not as unpleasant as something like Double-Edged, but uh, still there. Anyway, we have Ascendance now for Alarak, which is really good. Uh, hopefully Alarak will be able to buff these ones up. Orbital Strike gets targeted on these Ascendants. Uh, oh, there's a little bit more dodging. And I think one Ascendant went down in that. Yeah, one Ascendant just gets smoked with the Orbital Strikes there. Uh, Alarak almost dodged all of that, but uh, I think he's really paying attention. Oh, and we have Black Death now that has come out. So Diffusion goes away, Black Death is now in uh, in rotation here. Uh, Black Death uh, is currently bugged with the Ascendants, at least as of the time of this patch. Um, and what Black Death does is it actually compounds with the uh, with the with the Avenger stacks for Ascendants. So uh, if uh, if they get hit by the Black Death mutator or if they get hit by the Plague effect. You can pretty much expect the Ascendant to just evaporate. It uh, it dies really, really quickly. But we have an Apocalypse that has come up here, and uh, that goes, uh, it takes out the Void Thrasher, and there are a few air units here that are still harassing this Apocalypse. It does get the Plague Mutator. A last barrage of missiles come out, but that is not enough to take out the uh, some of the scouts here. These scouts are going to make their way towards the player's base. Over here, Stukov is not really affected by the Black Death Mutator, so that uh, that works really well for him. Stukov is generally really good against most mutators, um, except for something like Transmutation. I think Transmutation is one of the mutators that really gives Stukov a hard time, because he ends up feeding the uh, the enemy units. But over here, there should be enough... Uh, uh, defenses to take it down. So Slim Pickings is gone, and uh, now we have Remove Unseen, which means everything else is cloaked, so it does not appear that our commanders have any detection. But let me just go over here to this side and show you what these mineral fields are. See how these mineral fields now are normal, but their their minerals are still at 1,300. 1, they do not get reset. So uh, this is why I was talking about them being on the timer. So these SCVs now are going to be mining like normal, 
but uh, these mineral fields are reduced in terms of the minerals they have. So, uh, yeah, our players are on a timer right now. So we move Unseen as over here, and everything now is cloaked, which uh, which will give them a lot of problems. You can see there are some cloaked units on this side as well that uh, Stuka was not able to deal with, but uh, we have a Havoc in the front line now, and the Havoc goes down and spreads the Plague Mutator to a bunch of other units, but a large number of Psionic Orbs just get thrown into the enemy base, essentially one shining a lot of the units there, but uh, there is a Hybrid Dominator, you can kind of see its effect over there, which is kind of funny, but... Uh, yeah, there needs to be some detection. Uh, the Havoc is providing enough detection over here now to uh, deal with that. We now have a Time Warp Mutator that has been added. That one is actually really good. It's a very good reprieve for the commanders. It's a really easy mutator to deal with. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the Plague Mutator on this side is going to kill off a lot of these Ascendants very, very quickly. So uh, all these Ascendants are pretty much all going to go down. Because, uh, yeah, they just get eaten through their shields. And, uh, yeah, there we go. All those Ascendants are, have just end up getting uh, killed off by the Black Death Mutator, which is, again, yeah, really nasty. Uh, Alarak also has the Plague, so uh, he's, he's gonna die at some point. Um, I believe not before he is going to be taking out some of these uh, things over here. Void Thrashers as well. So, yeah, a total of... It's only two Ascendants. I guess the Black Death Meteor doesn't really count as a kill. That's probably why these Ascendants are not being displayed. But, uh... Yeah, there we go. So now we have Life Leech. So, Black Death goes away. Um, and now we have Life Leech. The one thing to note when Black Death disappears from Wheel of Misfortune is that the Plague effect that has been applied to the units does not disappear. So uh, you probably want to sit and isolate these guys away just, uh, just to clean up the death effect because otherwise the Plague will keep spreading. Uh, just because the Mutator is not active does not mean that it will not spread, so uh, it's best to get these guys killed off before you get your next batch of units over. Uh, Stukov is going to move here and try and deal with the bonus objective, but again, Stukov does not have detection, which means the Archangel, which is parked on this side, you can kind of see its blurriness over here, uh, is able to deal a lot of damage to the infested, combined with the two Colossi that are parked over there, and uh, that essentially shreds off uh, Stukov's infested. I think his whole goal was to just get rid of the Black Death, I think. Yeah, I think that was his plan. But yes, the We Move Unseen Mutator is the next one that will get cycled out, so that'll be a little bit better. Life Leech does make it a little bit more difficult, it makes these units significantly more tanky because uh, they end up healing their HP uh, as they uh, deal damage. But uh, again, we have another bunch of Ascendants over here, and uh, they are okay. So uh, right now, We Move Unseen disappears, and we have Temporal Field, which is again, a really easy Mutator to deal with as long as you're paying attention to the map. Uh, we have uh, Time Warp, Life Leech, and Temporal Field. Life Leech being the only one that's a little bit difficult, but this is a very, very lucky combination for the commanders because uh, they're able to uh, push relatively easily, and uh, if they uh, hurry, they will be able to clear this mission before the, uh, the next mutator comes around. Because uh, the one thing about Wheel of Misfortune is you do not want to end up with a difficult set of mutators, so as soon as you see an easy scent, you kind of want to push as hard as possible and clear the mission as much uh, as you can. Otherwise, uh, you can end up struggling against things like propagators and just die and all sorts of other nasty stuff, so... Uh, as you can see over here, both uh, commanders are making a very, very strong push into clearing. There is an Alexander that comes down and uh, starts dealing damage to these Void Thrashers, uh, and, uh, but th there are two Hybrid Dominators on that side. They seem to aggro the uh, Colossi that got mind controlled by the Alexander, so that kind of works out for them. Um, well, two of these Void Thrashers have gone down right now. Ascendants focus fire down the Dominator with a Mind Blast, Dominator evaporates right there. And as you can see, they're Propagators, that's exactly what I was talking about. You do not want mutators like that in the, in the set. So the Propagators will start spawning from that enemy base, so uh, very, very important to clear because Propagators does give Stukov a lot of problems. And there we go. Those Void Thrashers are go down just in time as those Propagators are about to cross that bridge. And that is GG.